Hello, everyone. Welcome back. This is Man United Inside again. Let's dive a little deeper into what's going on with our beloved Manchester United squad. You know, it's like when you're watching a movie and you're on the edge of your seat, just waiting to see how it all turns out. That's exactly how we're feeling right now with Mason Greenwood, Jaden Sancho, and Luke Shaw. First off, there's a lot of talk about Greenwood and Sancho possibly making a comeback to the team. But here's the catch. It's not a done deal yet. Our new owner, Sir Jim Ratcliffe, is the one who's got the final say. It's kind of like when you're waiting for your parents to decide if you can go out with your friends. You're hopeful, but there's that uncertainty hanging over you. Now, on to Luke Shaw. Poor guy just can't seem to catch a break with these injuries. It's like when your favorite player gets sidelined in a game, it's a real blow to the team. We're definitely feeling the absence of his skills and experience, especially in defense. But hey, let's not lose hope. We're Manchester United, and resilience is practically in our DNA. As fans, we've been through tough times before, and we've always come out stronger on the other side. So let's keep cheering on our team, showing them our unwavering support no matter what. Together, we'll ride out this wave of uncertainty and come out even stronger. Because when it comes down to it, we're not just fans. We're part of the Manchester United family. And together, there's nothing we can't overcome. Again and again. Manchester United host Fulham in a huge Premier League clash on Saturday afternoon. Eric Ten Hag's side have been in superb form of late as they continue to chase down a Champions League spot. The Red Devils got the better of Luton Town last time out, running out 2-1 winners at Kenilworth Road. Rasmus Hoylund's quick-fire double was enough to edge a frantic Premier League clash with the Hatters. Elsewhere, Fulham are sitting fairly comfortably in mid-table, nine points clear of the bottom three. They are looking to get back to winning ways, and their season back on track for a top-half finish. Last time out, Marco Silva's side were beaten by 2-1 at home to Aston Villa, with Ollie Watkins bagging a brace at Craven Cottage. United currently sit sixth, just three points behind Tottenham and five points behind Unai Emery's men. However, they remain fairly inconsistent at Old Trafford, with only five teams having scored fewer league goals at home. But the Cottagers are one of the Prem's tamest sides on their travels, with just a single away win all season and zero in 2024. What is their form like? Fulham have recorded one victory since their 2-0 defeat to Newcastle in the FA Cup fourth round. Marco Silva's men ran out 3-1 winners over Bournemouth at home before their defeat to Villa. Before that victory, Fulham were held to two successive draws against relegation strugglers Everton and Burnley. Eric Ten Hag's side are undefeated in their last seven games in all competitions. United have recorded four consecutive league wins and scored 11 goals across those fixtures. Kabi Mainu scored a late grasp winner to win 4-3 at Wolves before a 3-0 victory over West Ham and 2-1 away win at Villa Park. Team News' Luke Shaw was withdrawn just before half-time during the 2-1 win at Luton last weekend. The England left-back was also taken off with a knock the week before against Aston Villa and could now be out for the season. Aaron Wan-Bissaka, Lisandro Martinez, Mason Mount, Anthony Martial and Tyrell Malaysia all remain out. Fulham will be without midfield stalwart Joao Palhinha as he misses out through suspension after collecting 10 yellow cards. The Portugal international has made more tackles than anybody else in the top flight this term, again and again. United forward Hodgland is in red-hot form and will be the biggest threat Fulham face. Hodgland now has 14 goals in all competitions, notching all seven of his Premier League goals in his last six outings. His goal inside 37 seconds at Luton saw a Prem record smashed. He became the youngest ever player to score in six consecutive league games. As he normally is, Pereira will be the main problem the Red Devils need to look out for. The Belgian midfielder's electric pace and vision in the final third means he can turn any moment into a dangerous situation. The former United man will likely step up to punish his former side. 
After all, this will be a necessity in Palhinha's absence. Fulham haven't beaten United since 2009, with only two draws since 2014. Also, other than the most recent meeting between the two, this fixture has had both teams on the score sheet in every game since 2019. But Fulham have been unlucky, suffering a stoppage time goal from Bruno Fernandes in their 1-0 defeat in the reverse fixture. United are returning to last season's goal scoring form, but remain vulnerable at the back with a makeshift defense again, likely on the weekend. Again and again, Sir Jim Ratcliffe has vowed to knock Manchester City and Liverpool off their perch to reclaim English football's bragging rights. But the new Old Trafford boss warned desperate Manchester United fans they may have to wait up to three years to see the club back where it expects to be. Speaking for the first time since completing his 1.03 billion purchase of a 27% stake in the club, which includes control of football affairs, petrochemicals, magnate Ratcliffe gave a remarkable insight into his ambitions and thoughts. That included a potential way back for bad boy pair Mason Greenwood and Jaden Sancho, although no final decision has been made on either player. Sir Jim also suggested his preferred option would be a new 2 b and replacement stadium for Old Trafford, although rebuilding the club's 114-year-old home is still on the agenda. But it was his on-field aims that will spark the biggest response from United fans, as Ratcliffe deliberately referenced two of Sir Alex Ferguson's most famous quotes. He said, We have a lot to learn from our noisy neighbor and the other neighbor, they are the enemy at the end of the day. There is nothing I would like better than to knock both of them off their perch. I know that Sir Alex was the first one who came out with that expression. I am in the same place as Alex, 100%. He was fiercely competitive and that is why he was successful. We have to be the same. But they have been in a good place for a while and there are things we can learn from both of them. They have sensible organizations, great people within the organizations, a good, driven and elite environment that they work in. I am very respectful of them, but they are still the enemy. Asked how long it might take for United to return to that elite level, Ratcliffe added, It's not a light switch, not one of these things that changes overnight. So it's not a 10-year plan. The fans would run out of patience if it was a 10-year plan. To think that we're going to be playing football as good as Manchester City played against Real Madrid last year by next season is not sensible. And if we give people false expectations, then they will get disappointed. But it's certainly a three-year plan to get there. The key thing is our trajectory so that people can see that we're making progress. In 2002, former Liverpool star Alan Hansen claimed that Ferguson was facing the greatest challenge of his career.